What is the best that we can be? The best that we can do or attain. This isn't about becoming the best at getting things, but doing our best at living. Come along with me as we look at one of Jesus' most challenging teachings. We begin with a call to worship. You could have stayed in bed. You could be eating breakfast out. We have chosen to be in this place feasting on God's word. You could give a cold shoulder to your neighbors. You could warm yourself in front of the fire. We have chosen to see God with more than just a sliver of our hearts. You could be chasing after the world's idols. You could be listening to television's talking heads. We have chosen to serve the one who blesses us with life. And as we look to that blessing and to this time of worship, we begin with a new commandment. As we approach each other and God in this time of worship, we lift up to God our prayer. God of all life and each life, you are the light of minds that seek to know you. You are the strength for those who seek to serve you. You reveal truth to those who search for you. In worship, we pause in your presence, resting from our work and responsibilities, from our worries and distractions. We come to enjoy your presence and praise you for the gift of life in Christ and in creation. God, who is all in all, you call us to choose life and walk in your ways, but we are tempted by shortcuts and easy solutions. You ask us to turn from anger and settle our differences, but we cling to grievances and point fingers at others. You ask us to be true to our word, but we prefer to keep everyone happy. Forgive us, O oh God, and give us courage to follow the paths you set for your people. God of promise and purpose, in the midst of life's distractions, still our minds to listen. In the midst of competing voices, speak your word of truth. Send your spirit to help us make wise choices. Receive our prayers and praise this day, for we open our hearts in love and loyalty to you, O oh God, our all in all. Amen. God invites us to choose life and find the blessing that comes from following God's ways. Accept God's gift of forgiveness and choose new life. Forgive one another and discover the peace of Christ. Our scripture reading comes from Matthew 5, verses 21 through 37. It's a continuation of the Sermon of the Mount. Today's scripture reading, it comes from uh, Matthew 
chapter 5, verses 21 to 37. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him. Or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in, a, in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is, it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a story of a wise tribal chief who sent his three sons on a vision quest. He pointed them in the direction of a high mountain and asked each of them to bring back a token to show how far upward each had been able to climb. The first son returned quickly. He held his hand, in his hand a wildflower. The chief knew that these grew just below the timberline. The second son brought back a stone of red flint, which revealed that he had made it almost to the top. The third son was gone for a very long time, and when he returned, he was empty-handed. Father, he said, where I stood, I saw a beautiful valley that where two great rivers joined the ocean. The vision was so magnificent that I couldn't pull myself away. I'm afraid I got so carried away that I forgot to bring anything back with me. The chief knew that the son had reached the peak of the mountain and said to him, It has been my ambition in life that one day all my sons shall see the vision you have seen. You have nothing in your hand, but you have a vision in your soul. A vision for a world that respects all people. It is that simple and that difficult. That is really what this very challenging passage from Scripture is all about. Living in a way that exemplifies a higher love. A love that looks at anger, adultery, divorce, and making oaths from the perspective of what shows compassion and care for another, and a love that keeps us from sin. We are human, so to live in that, in the way that Jesus teaches here would seem an impossible task, unattainable. 
It would do us well to remember that this is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. He began with, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek, and so on. Jesus knows people, knows the pain, sorrow, and hurt that we experience. He lived it and was hung on a cross to die because of people's anger, their concern for power, and the threat that he posed because of his teaching about a new kingdom. The kingdom Jesus spoke about was one of love and grace, one where people would be at peace and their needs met. But all authorities, all that the authorities paid attention to was the threat of a new kingdom that might undermine their power and would take control or even possess a threat of war and people rebelling. They did not hear the word of love. And it is difficult to hear the word of love in the scripture, this scripture particularly, concerning anger. Years past, for many, preaching was one that was referred to as hellfire and brimstone, where you get, you act together or else. These words of Jesus about anger feel like hellfire and brimstone. But really, it's about our hearts, about reconciliation, about the best relationships that we can attain. It is not that we don't get angry. Sometimes it takes anger to make change in the world. Rather, it is about how we act on that anger. Does our anger reflect at the need of those most vulnerable or our own desire for justice for ourselves? Does our anger bring about reconciliation or just beget more frustration, violence, and rage? As for adultery and divorce, it is important to remember that these words are spoken at a time in history when women were considered and understood to be possessions. When it came to adultery, the woman was seen as the seductress. The man did not bear the weight of the burden of making poor choices. It was the woman who made them do it. As well, in the case of divorce, if women were outcast by their husband, they would not have a place to go there would be no provision for them. In speaking as Jesus did, his intent seems to be making safe harbor for women at a time when they could be deeply vulnerable in body, mind, and spirit. Given the rights and laws that we have, at least in Canada and elsewhere in the world, women do not have to stay in marriages that are unsafe. We know the damage for anyone in an intimate relationship, such as a marriage, where there is abuse that can well be uh, that divorce is the best and safest option for all involved. Concerning oaths, well, oaths were like signing a contract. At that time, not all could read or write. One's word was taken as the basis for commerce and community. There were some who would swear by heaven and earth that they would keep their word. Jesus is simply saying, if you speak the truth always, then your yes is enough and your no is enough. You don't need to emphasize it with an oath, for if your word is not enough, then the oath means nothing. Jesus starts this part of the conversation with, You have heard that it was said, but I say to you. In all of this, Jesus is referring to both the law or commandments, or to the teachings that have become part of the societal norms. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you'll be liable to the hell of fire. You have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery in her, his heart, with her in his heart. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, commits her to, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Followed again by, again, 
You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool. You have heard, but I say. Jesus was not saying that the commandments were wrong or not enough, but rather that how we live into them matters. What is in our hearts and minds matters. How we treat others matters. You have heard that this is the minimum that you must do to be a follower of Christ and to find your place comfortably in the world and make it into heaven when your living is done. But Jesus says to us, the minimum is not God's desire. The hope, the promise is abundant life. And so how we live, how we care for others, how we go above and beyond, how we hold ourselves to a higher standard, well, all that matters. Jesus cast a vision for a world where love is the basis for everything. Love so deep, so wide, so high, so broad, that it would embrace all living things, people, and creation. A love so breathtaking, so magnificent, that you forget to bring something back from your experience of it. You know deep joy, hope, peace, gratitude, and of course, love for yourself, but also for all, love for all, and that flows from you to others. Maybe you do bring something back from that. It is important to remember that when Matthew was writing, he was writing to a community. So the hope is that we experience this breathtaking, magnificent love. But that is the community of faith is also an expression of the breathtaking, magnificent love. Can we attain it? Not perfectly. But we can live into it, lean into it. Jesus seems to think that we can do so. May we believe it ourselves and live our lives as individuals and a community of faith that demonstrates a higher love, a broader, deeper, magnificent, breathtaking vision of a kingdom of love. We have heard the word of scripture. We have heard a message as a response to that, but we respond also uh, to that love with holding people and the world in prayer. Let us pray. God of life and love, in spoken words and in the silence of our hearts, we give you thanks for all of life, for the grace you provide to creation in its diversity, and for your loving kindness known in the details of our lives. Hear us, we pray, as we speak of matters on our hearts and minds this day. Where the church is divided by squabbling or deep disagreement, where Christians emphasize our differences instead of seeking unity in Christ, where we put energy into guarding tradition at the expense of honoring new life and relationships with our neighbors, transform us and make all things new. Where families are divided by old hurts or new tensions, where friendships have ended through misunderstanding or neglect, where relationships have been severed by betrayal or thoughtlessness, transform us and make all things new. Where countries are torn by war and conflict, where communities are divided by prejudice or unexamined privilege, where leaders provoke anger instead of building understanding cooperation, Transform us and make all things new. Where the poor and lonely find little support or comfort, where people are tired from overwork or pressured by rising costs, where workers fear for their jobs in the present or the future, transform us and make all things new. Where people suffer pain with physical, emotional, or spiritual roots, where loss marks the beginning and ending of every day, where young people fear for the future of the planet and their elders mourn the loss of what they once assumed would last, transform us and make all things new. God, our source and savior, in Christ you make all things new and so unite 
united in one voice, we pray the words he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God sets choices before us. Some can bring life and blessing, but others lead to despair. When we give our gifts to God, we make a choice for life, a choice to bless others in God's holy name. So trust that God will bless the choice we make today. If you choose to bless or bring an offer, give an offering, a donation to the life and work of this congregation here at St. Andrews in Thunder Bay, uh, you can do so. Uh, you can check it out on the website at standrewspres-tbay.ca. Uh, and there you can find information for donating so that we can continue the work that we are doing from this place uh, that's obviously reaching out to you and to others. As we reach out, we sing the hymn, Draw the Circle Wide. Go with joy and peace to claim new life as you serve God and one another. And may the blessing of God, who is the source, Savior, and Spirit of life, be with you and those whose lives you touch this day and always. Mm -hmm.